this is going to be a strange interview because I can't remember uh, so many things. Um, all I remember is that uh, Barry and I were talking about doing something, writing something together. And um, I guess one day uh, I had some ideas and he had some ideas. And I flew up to Berkeley and uh, we sat down in his office and I told him my ideas and then he told me his ideas and we both hated each other's ideas. So uh, we sat there for a little bit and then I said, well, I think I said, I have an idea, a little idea about something or other. And he said, oh, I kind of like that. And one thing led to another. And uh, there was Lost Highway, the script. I think it had to do, one of my ideas had to do with the mystery man. And um, uh, at a at a at that party, um, that 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 kind of feeling, and I can't remember a sequence of how the thing unfolded, um, what happened first, but um, I really liked working with Barry, and uh, uh, together. Uh, we got uh, the film. We would sit in a room and talk, and that's kind of the way it worked. I also had, I had a th whole thing of this character of Mr. Eddie, and I can't remember how that thing got in there, but, um, you know, when you work together, it doesn't really matter uh, by talking and talking and, and, and you know, uh, it, it starts, the different threads start, you know, knitting themselves. And, and there was the script. Well, I've got to say, you know, like, um, it was, uh, Bill Pullman was, you know, absolutely great as Fred Madison. And Patricia Arquette was absolutely fantastic. And all the characters, all the uh, the actors um, were uh, so good. And one of the great things about actors is no matter how strange, Balthazar Getty, incredible, great guy, really great guy. I don't know why all of them aren't super superstars. But actors, you know, um, they can get uh, to a place, um, they're they're filled with you know uh, wonder and imagination and and they get it so quick no matter how strange a thing is they get it and their talent is to make it real they get it and their talent is to make it real from a deep place and when that happens it's really really beautiful and uh so everybody you know got there uh in a, in a really beautiful way. I talk, we, you know, there's, there's no rule or way. Um, there's just, wherever you start, um, it's, it's a process sort of, of, of talking and then trying it and then talking some more and then trying it. And it just gets closer and closer. And the things that you say in between the trying, in between the rehearsing, they might be, you know, stupid things. But between me and the actor, they're not stupid. And, and they're just um, little keys that, you know, put it, you know, closer to being correct. And then, and then when it feels correct, we both know it. It's like it, it, it needed to go from wherever it was, you know, and then bang, it's, it's there. It definitely is a kind of a film noir thing, but um, still it has a different, different 
elements going uh, from a straight ahead film noir. But it has that film noir thing for sure. And, you know, I, I didn't ever say anything at the time, but I had had a fixation on O.J. Simpson, the trial. And I think uh, some of this uh, grew out of O.J. Simpson because uh, here is a guy who, at least, you know, uh, I believe, you know, committed two murders and yet is able to go on uh, living and, and speaking and, you know, doing and um, golfing, things like this. And so what does the mind do uh, when, it, when, you know, after something like that, after a, a you know, uh, horrific murder and, and that experience, how does the mind protect itself from that knowledge and go on? And that's interesting to me. And the mind is interesting, you know, for sure. Huge, huge stories in the mind. But that's one thing. Um, and when we, Barry and I talked about that. How does the mind trick itself so that that can be put in a place where it no longer um, has that, you know, uh, horrific power and you go on living? There's... Um, Things that uh, there's things that have to happen, uh, information that has to be given uh, for the thing to to go, and um, the mystery man, you know, provided that. You know, to say with words anymore would not not be good. The idea of the house um, grew out of. Um, my house because um, the the whole thing in the beginning happened to me that the intercom buzzer went off early one morning and a voice said David and I said yes and the voice said, Dick Laurent is dead. Now, I didn't have a window to look at right then. So I went from where I was to a different part of the house so I could try to see who was at the, if anybody was leaving the house who had said that. And I saw no one. By the time I got to the window where I could see out, there was no one there. Now, my next door neighbor, his name was David also, because I didn't know any Dick Laurent. And so I don't know what that meant, but that, that happened. So, and I didn't want to shoot at my own house. So I was looking, we were looking for a location that had that same kind of uh, difficulty seeing out the front. And I thought it might be easy, you know, to find that, but it was the hardest location to find. And that's when this house that we're having this interview in came up for sale. And it didn't have the right configuration, but it had a good price. And I could, if I owned a house, I could tear it apart and reconfigure it, which we did. And um, so it worked out, you know, really well. But that's the reason uh, we shot here to be able to reconfigure the house. Sometimes, you know, um, there might be something in, in one film that could spark, you know, like a, a spark blows off of one film and sets a fire and it's another film. I don't, I don't know of anything for sure that that's, that's happened like that for me. Well, there's things that you take from every film. It, it builds a certain thing, but it not... not really the, the stories or characters, but some, some way of going kind of changes maybe from, you know, grows. A, a film is made up of, you know, millions of moments, and that's the thing about it. It has to all feel, all the elements have to feel correct. And when they feel correct, it, it's kind of a seamless flow. 
if one is out of being correct, it's a, it it's so obvious. It's a disaster. So it's it's a constant kind of um, watching and and feeling until it feels all feels correct, and 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 that's you know what a film making a film is. That's that's it. that's it. Ideas, when you're lucky, they come along an idea that you fall in love with, and you um, or it's a series of ideas that string themselves together to a big idea, a film, a script, and a big idea that you fall in love with enough to want to go change that into film, translate that into film. And since the ideas are the most important thing, um, you just follow those ideas and stay true to those ideas and there you go. It's the same on every film. Even though the ideas are different, the process is so fantastic and um, so this Lost Highway was the Lost Highway ideas. And, um, and you know, uh, it's, it, to me, they're, they were cinema ideas, that film can tell those kind of things. And, uh, you know, where there's, you know, still room to dream and there's abstractions and mood and feelings, uh, and I, I love Lost Highway for those things. I liked a, a lot of scenes, in, I mean, I like all of scenes, but um, let's see if there's a favorite. Well, I kind of like uh, the sequence at night. When Fred is hearing Renee calling him and it ends up um, with um, the mystery man's face on Renee. I think if we saw a video of our of a scene that we remember, it would be very, very different from our memory. Reality is huge. It's not anything out of reality. Um, it's just different kinds of reality. And um, so it just shows you um, uh, you know, how you remember things is not necessarily the way it actually happened, but it's the way you remember it. And it's maybe even more valid than the actual thing in some ways. There was a thing that we discovered after the fact, um, a name of a certain illness, uh, psychogenic fugue, which has a beautiful, beautiful feel to it, psychogenic fugue, is sort of what uh, uh, the film is. It comes up in people uh, with some sort of illness. <laughs> um, and, and illness is, um, you know, like a, a loss a, or great loss of balance. So um, sometimes we do things that throw the balance off so much um, that we're tossed into um, something like a psychogenic fugue. And that's, you know, Fred Madison. I get the psychogenic fugue almost every afternoon. Ha, ha, ha.